All right, now we're going to talk about syringes. Uh, a hypodermic syringe here. They are for uh, injecting medication into under your skin, into your muscle, into your veins. Uh, what what I want to show you is how to calculate medical dosages for syringes. So a hypodermic syringe, they have a bevel, which is uh, attached to the needle, and the hub opening is designed to snap right into that tip of the barrel. The barrel is for sterile liquid medications, and the plunger is what holds that um, the amount of medication. So here, you would read the plunger you would read the amount of medication by this, not by the tip of the plunger. So a barrel here is a hollow cylinder that holds medication. It has calibrations on the outer surface, which we'll get to in a second. The plunger fits into the barrel and is moved back and forth. A rubber stopper attached to the plunger has two rings that fit snugly into the syringe. The first ring here is what determines how much is in that syringe. The tip is the end of the needle that holds the needle, and the needle slips into the tip of the syringe or can be twisted and locked into place. Factors that determine the size of the needle are the amount of fluid to be put into the syringe, the patient's size, the type of tissue being injected, and the viscosity of the medication. Viscosity means how, how liquidy it is. Like, is it like water or is it like syrupy? So it's the texture of the medication, I guess you could say. Uh, two major types of syringes. They're oral without needles. They're for children. It's in our book in Chapter 12, which we don't cover in this class anymore. Uh, or hyperdermic, which is developed in 1853. Fun fact. Take that to trivia tonight. Um, but the hyperdermic is uh, with needles. That's all that meant. So calibration on the, on the syringe barrels, let's talk about that. The number of milliliters between the longer marks goes on top of the fraction. So the longer marks, I would say right here would be between 20 and 30, or here between 10 and 20, or here between 2 and 3. So the number of milliliters between these two marks, so this would be 10 milliliters between the marks, over the number of spaces between the marks. There's either going to be 5 spaces or 10 spaces between those marks. So here there's not a lot, so there's 5 spaces, so it's 10 milliliters over five spaces. So each one of these represent two milliliters per space. So in other words, if I go 10, then I can go 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and so on. See, two milliliters per space. And they're made for IV intravenous. They're big. It's a big barrel. The 10 milliliters, there are 10 milliliters between 10 and 20. So they hold 10 milliliters and there would be 10 spaces. So each milliliter would be 10 divided by 10 is one milliliter per space. If I were to count, it would be something like this, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You see how that's one milliliter per space. This would also be an IV needle. And once you get to a smaller needle between two and three, there are one milliliter. There is one milliliter, but there are five spaces. So one milliliter for five spaces, these would go up by two tenths of a milliliter. So it would be 2, 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8, 3. They're very small. And so on. So that would also be IV syringe. This next one is one milliliter for five spaces, because from two to three, for example, is one milliliter, from three to four is one milliliter, from four to five is one milliliter. So you have one milliliter between the bigger marks and the little marks, there are only five of them, so those would also go up by 0.2 milliliters per space. And last, not last, but the next one here would be uh, between, I'm going to go from one to two, so between one milliliter, there's one milliliter, and between there, see how this has a stopping point of 0.5, so between there, there are 10 spaces. So each one of these needles have one milliliter for 10 spaces, which would make it one-tenth of a milliliter per space. So 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, and 2. This would be an intermuscular syringe. It holds three milliliters. 
The last one would be a subcut syringe. So it would be uh, between the longer marks. I rewrote these for you so that you could see that there's a tenth of a milliliter between the bigger spaces. And they're little tiny things, but there's five spaces in there. So if you would do 0.1 divided by 5, you would see that each one of those little itty bitty teeny marks are two hundredths of a milliliter. So if you're giving medication to a patient and you want to give it by the hundredths, you, then you would use a subcut syringe. It could also go into the muscle. If you want to go to the hundredths, if it's under one milliliter. So, but, uh, typically this would be for subcut, typically this would be for intramuscular, and the rest would be for IV. So if, you're, if your measurement is under one milliliter, you're going to round to the nearest hundred, because that's what your syringe goes up by. If you're going to three milliliters, you're going to round to the nearest tenth. So large capacity syringes are these, which go through the IV, for uh, drawing blood or preparing medications for IV administration. Small capacity syringes are these little ones over here, and they're for intradermal, subcutaneous, or intramuscular injections. So right now, they're phasing out cubic centimeters, or cc's, and milliliters is preferred. cc's and milliliters are the exact same things, but you have to be careful because although milliliters is preferred right now, there are still some old school places that use cc's. So the doc might say something like, oh, give your patient you know, drain, you know, eight cc's from the patient's knee or whatever. And you'll be like, all right, no problem. And you'll go, all right, that's eight milliliters. And that patient might be crazy. I might say something to you like, oh, no, it can't be. The doctor said cc's, not milliliters. And they just might keep going with uh, not letting you get away with that. However, just go with it then and say, all right, I'll do eight cc's instead of milliliters. But cc's and milliliters are the same thing. It'd be really nice for you to know that going into it. There are sterilized syringes, or sp I'm sorry, specialized syringes, such as insulin syringes, which are marked with USP units uh, by the United States Pharmacopoeia. Pharmacopoeia. They're calibrated in units rather than milliliters. So the standard 100 unit capacity goes to 100, the low dose goes to 50, the low dose, uh, the lower dose one also is a 30 unit capacity and they go up by two units. The dual scale version of the 100 unit insulin syringe is on one side, they'll go up by every other one. But then if you need an odd number, you just switch the, um, the barrel over and then you mark it by the odd. So for example, this would be 55, 57, 59, looks like that's 61. And this one here would be 60. So, yeah. And there are tuberculin, tuberculin syringes. They're slim barrels and they hold only one milliliter or one cc when full. So indicate which type of syringe should be used to make each of the following injections and get properly rounded amount that should be administered. So a dosage calculation yields 11.25 milliliters of a medication to be administered through an IV drip of dextrose 5% in water. So what is this asking? Which syringe would you use? Well, as we saw before, we have IV syringes, we have IM syringes, and we have subcut syringes. And this is a bigger version of the subcut because that's really hard to see. So if a dosage yields 11.25 milliliters of medication to be administered through an IV drip, then I know I can either do this one, this one, this one, or this one. And because the quantity that I need to put in there, 11.25 milliliters, the only A and B fit 11.25 milliliters. But if I look about it, if I look at it, A goes up by two, so this would be 10 to 12. So I could either put 10 to 12 milliliters in syringe A, or I could put 10 to 11 to 12 milliliters in syringe B. So although both of them are for IV injection, and then you would never put it in C, because C would go over 10. Don't guesstimate it. Use a bigger uh, barrel. So this one, actually, the correct answer would be then syringe B. 
and you would put 11 milliliters into that syringe. This is the correct answer. A nurse needs to inject 0 0.825 milliliter subcut. So if we look at the subcut syringe, the only subcut syringe we have is this one, which is blown up here for us. If we want to blow it up even more, I'll do that for you. Let's do that. Ooh. 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 I don't know what those noises are. They were for you, for your enjoyment. So there, so this is subcut. So if I had to put 0.825 milliliters, I would use syringe F would be the only one to use for subcut. And then I would go to 0.825. So 0.8, it only goes up by two tenths. So I would mark it to there. So 0 0.82 milliliters. If it went up by, um, one 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 hundredth of a milliliter, then I could put 0 0.83 milliliters in it. But your syringe only goes up by twos and fours. So I could choose between 8.2 or 0 0.84 milliliters. So I'm going to choose syringe F at 0 0.82 milliliters. Because this would be way too much. Cool. An injection needs to be given intramuscularly and calculated amount is 1.63333 milliliters. So intramuscular syringe would be this one, E. And 1.633, they go up by tenths, so it would just be 1.6 milliliters. The next one, we're going to calculate the amount. And remember, when we calculate the amount, we're going to say dose times the strength to get the amount. So it says give 200 milligrams intramuscularly of a drug that is 165 milligrams per milliliter. Well, the first thing that we're going to look at is it's intramuscular. So I'm going to use this syringe. So I'm going to use syringe E. And it's going to be dose times strength. So we have 200 milligrams times my strength, which would be 165 milligrams for one milliliter. And when I do the calculations, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, and I'm going to come out with 1.2 milliliters. The last one we're going to work similarly. It says give 30 milligrams, milligrams intramuscularly of a drug that is 25 milligrams per milliliter. So I'm going to look here, and it says intramuscular, so this is intramuscular. And so I need to use syringe E, and I need to give 30 milligrams as my dose times my strength with milligrams in the bottom to cancel. And my strength is 25 milligrams, so 25 goes with milligrams for one milliliter. When I cancel it and do the math, it is also 1.2. Oh, not 12, not 12. That's a lot, intramuscularly. Woo! 1.2 milliliters. Now, these two examples gave uh, results of 1.2 milliliters. However, it is not always going to be the case. So don't just say, oh, it's intramuscular. Let's give 1.2. No, 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 no. Go ahead and do the calculations for all those each time. So another thing with uh, medication is one is calculations, but the second one is administration errors by um, just small mistakes. If you've ever seen a barrel of a syringe, you would notice that the little tick marks on there are very, very, very small. So say you got the right dosages calculations correctly, but then when you went to go fill the syringe, you were off just by one little tick mark. Well, these dosing errors with syringes, they must be taken very, 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 very carefully uh, when filling the syringe, especially with pediatric high alert and elderly uh, patients, pediatric drugs, high alert drugs and elderly patients. So what do you mean by this, right? You're asking, well, if instead of putting 2.4 milliliters into my syringe, I accidentally went one more up and put 2.5 milliliters, which is just one little tick mark. Let's see what the percent error on that is. To get the percent error, you're going to do the difference in amount over the original amount. And because it's a percent, I'm going to times it by 100. So the difference in my amounts here is between 2.5 to 2.4. And my original amount should have been 2.4 milliliters. And then I'm going to times it by 100. 
So 2.5 to 2.4 is 0 0.1 over 2.4 times 100. So I would have a 4% um, difference. A 4% increase or decrease, it would be an increase, isn't that much, but it is still an increase. And if you could be more precise, that would be great. So if you look at this syringe barrel, you can see that it holds three milliliters. And when it holds three milliliters, you're like, okay, cool. And you're only off by one little, one little mark, so it's not that big of a deal. But it is, it's 4% when you could be 0% off. But if you have less medication in that same syringe, um, there's going to be a bigger percent difference off. So the reason why I say this is because uh, if you had a gallon of milk and you took a cup out, if you took a cup of water or a cup of that milk out, you wouldn't see very much of a difference in the milk container. Versus if you have a pint and you took out a cup, you just took out half of its content. Because you had less in it, the more you took out, the more percentage-wise it would have mattered to the volume of what was left over in the container. So that's the same with syringe barrels. When you had a lot, like almost three milliliters, you took out, you were just off by one little tick mark and you were only 4% off. However, same amount, right? Instead of one, you put 1.1 1 .1 in. So same, same amount off would be 1.1 minus 1.0 divided by the original amount that should have been there, which is 1.0 and times it by 100. The same amount off, 0 0.1 milliliters, when you should have put one milliliter in it, times 100 would have given you a 10% error. And I don't know about you, but 10% is pretty big. It's a pretty big number in some cases. Antipsychotic drugs would be a huge number, right? But versus um, Advil or something like that where you have more milligrams, it would be a lot less uh, as, you know, important. However, you know, if someone's 10% off of my bank account, I'm pretty mad if it's not to my favor. And if it is to my favor, I'm like, why am I getting this extra money that I'm going to have to pay back later? So 10% versus 4% is a big difference. But if we can correct with no percent, that would be the best case scenario. All right. That's how you do medication with syringes.